Australia's business channel. This is Media Week. Hello, welcome to the program. Ahead, Seven West says the worst is behind it. Our interviews with key executives from the company's Investor Day this week coming up. APN gets a new CEO, a senior News Limited executive, and a better month for ad spend for radio in April. But first, an Investor Day for the new News Corp, which will house the publishing businesses and Australian pay TV assets, is going to be held in Australia on June 5. That news came as the media company unveiled third quarter net profit nearly tripled to $2.85 billion. Let's get the details. We're joined by our co-host James Manning, the editor and publisher of Media Week. James, good to see you. Good Looking at this result, what were the drivers of it? Um, the old faithfuls, I guess. The um, cable TV division did very well. Movies uh, did, had a pretty good quarter. Things like uh, Life of Pi, uh, that uh, animated feature, The Croods, which has been in the Australian uh, number one and number two for a whole month. So, yeah, that's been building some big revenues and that, that money will, will flow through to the next quarter, I guess. And the uh, TV division, a um, few things were up, a few things down. Some of the ad revenue was a bit flat, but uh, some of the uh, revenues they get for uh, broadcasting uh, their stations off, off other... Off other um, platforms uh, did very well. And what about publishing? Uh, yeah, publishing wasn't wasn't a good look for them. Uh, newspapers was the the income dropped from about 130 million down to 85. So it was uh, yeah a bit of a fall. And uh, one of the reasons, I guess, while they'll be doing that split, they want to try and get that bit of a focus on the newspaper division, get it out there operating by itself. And we heard that that split is on target for the end of June and the date was given too for the Investor Day for Australia. Yeah, June 5, uh, we'll have a, a lot more uh, detail about what's coming up. And they are in, the, in that uh, quarter there were $25 million in costs for that split too, also still incurring some costs from those ongoing UK investigations, about $42 million there. And also, too, an announcement this week about a, a move away from that sort of freemium model towards a metered uh, subscription model for uh, the Metro. Yeah, look, the free ride's over for uh, a lot of people who have been helping themselves to free content online, stop buying the newspapers perhaps because they can get it all on the web. That's going to end um, Thursday of next week. The different levels, I think, in... Uh, the Daily Telegraph and the Herald Sun are the first two papers where this will be rolled out. Total of, I think, it's 20 free uh, articles a week, but you have to you have to uh, register to get that. Then after that, you'll have to pay. But in Melbourne, the people who want to get on the Herald Sun site, and it's a massive site for a lot of AFL fans, it's where they go to get a lot of their news. I think it's only 15 uh, free articles a week, and after that, you'll have to pay. So it'd be really great watching how that goes for them. Other uh, markets will be rolled out in June. Okay, and the the overall cost for a digital package is what one dollar for the first yeah one dollar for the first twenty eight days, then four dollars a week. So it's pretty cheap, you know. And then they go up. I think if you want to get all the papers and the uh, digital subscription, it's about uh, nine dollars a week. It'll cost you. Okay, all right, and obviously uh, more on that coming up in the show Absolutely. next week. For sure. Um, let's turn now to the Seven West Media Investor Day, which was held this week, with CEO Don Volte declaring that the worst is over for the company. James, you were there. Yeah, just tell us a bit about this because he did warn that underlying net profit would fall between 2 and 4% for FY13, but the, the fact that he said that FY13 is going to be the worst of it really sparked mm. shares rallying. Yeah, it's probably not a bad result given they'd taken so many costs out. It's, you know, every media company is trying to get their costs down and they also they're trying not to affect you know, their operating profit or their, you know, what the customer sees and Seven seems to be achieving that. You know, they're still, still customers are very happy with what they're putting out but at the same time they're doing it uh, a lot cheaper. So lots, yes, sorry. Sorry. Yeah, lots of buzzwords to about yesterday too about audience, you know, the, you know, this is the place to go for big audiences was the message to in, investors and you know, also advertisers, you know, if you want you know, big audiences, this is the place to come. Some interesting comments too about the rise of internet connected TVs, what Seven West wants to do to, to get in on that. Yeah, fascinating. Look, there actually is a trial underway at the moment for streaming uh, TV of their product. Um, no dates about when that might be rolled out. They're a digital store, so they'll be selling uh, content direct to consumers. That's coming in a couple of years. Connected TV will be here next year. You'll be able to do things like they said, look, we might sell a, a premiere episode, a special episode of Home and Away, for example. If you want to buy it, you'll get it before it goes to air. Uh, then you can pay a bit extra, maybe get it ad-free. So lots of interesting things they're experimenting with. Yeah, absolutely. And you spoke to the Chief Operating Officer, Rowan Lund, and began by asking him about the fact that $100 million in, in costs have been stripped out and, and more to come. Sure. 
we're in line with the guidance we've given the market. It, that's not a small number to come out, but there's still a bit more to come. So we're, it's just going to get harder from here. Mm. Well, you have to open sort of new businesses. To, you're talking about, you know, retail. Tim Warner's talking about you know, TV is the new retail. Mm. Will you need to, will you be working in partnerships with people for things like that? Yeah, definitely. We, you... we know what we're good at. We're good at content. We're good at building the audiences. But I, I think you'll see we'll be much better at partnering. That's, that's something that we see will have to become a core competence of the group. Working with Telstra on the, the health engine business is an example of that too. Yeah. yeah, that's one of the most interesting things you probably did announce today. This um, mm. seems a bit of a no-brainer when it's explained simply to you that you yeah. can book an appointment with you know any doctor anywhere by just well, logging onto a website, presumably. Well, it's actually become very, very big in the US, and it hasn't grown as quickly here yet, but wait for that to change. So Health Engine's the leader. Telstra, with their access to census and their health business and, and, and their access to small businesses and practices around the country... I mean, the way to make these work is you've also got to drive your audience at the same time. And that's where we come in. Yeah. Uh, partnership there with Telstra. Are there other things you can be talking to, to oh, Telstra definitely. about uh, doing? Uh, you know, we've got a very, very good relationship with Telstra, and we talk about things all the time. So uh, first steps. Mm. Yeah. Uh, the, does the group operate in different ways now? Do you get together more with senior management from, from all the different factions? Yeah, we're... We're a very close executive group. I think that's something Don's really focused on is, is making sure we're a team and we present as a team. We, you know, we're all very aligned in what we're trying to achieve. So, yeah, no, I, I definitely think that's, that's the first step. Mm. And, and part of this new strategy seems about, you know, uh, going direct to your customers more. Yeah, yeah, well, it doesn't take away from the importance of the agency for us and we just see this as... This is to complement that. This is that ability to transact as well. We think that's what they're expecting from us. Mm. Will there be, and is it all about digital pretty much for the new opportunities? I mean, there's going to be very little, you know, new print, for example, uh, yeah, whether I, it be in the West, West Australian or Pacific magazines. If you really get into new things, it'll pretty much be digital. Yeah, certainly my focus is, you know, you heard me talk about rising tides interested in growth businesses, growth categories, that's where we're, that's where we're looking to invest at the moment. Mm. Do you, I mean, we see the West Australians very successful, probably because it's the least digitally advanced uh, yeah. newspaper in the country, so it, I guess it, uh, different things apply to, to different parts of the company? Yeah, but it's interesting, it's seen as the least digital because it probably hasn't sold its soul and just become digital. You know, it, it's proud to be a newspaper. and. Nothing changes that in our new strategy. We see digital as a complement or an extension of that and enhance that experience. People still like using the newspaper. And so that's something, you know, we're, we're not ashamed of that. In fact, we're proud of it. The HB, was HBB, HBB TV. TV. Yeah. Now, is that a proprietary thing that you have the name for? Is that a generic no, term for what's No, happening? that's the term that was used for it in Europe as it was rolled out in Europe. It, you know, it's, it's doing very well over there and in the markets that it's launched. And, you know, we see that's inevitable for Australia. And, yeah, no, very excited about hybrid. So it's virtually just a connected TV to the web and you supply content direct to yeah, via an app on your smart TV it's, or something? It's, a, it it's a protocol that we'll all broadcast to in Australia. And so all the TV sets will be built to that standard. And so we'll allow a consistency in how we broadcast and how that will work. Mm. Mm. You're testing some live streaming at the moment, uh, we are. Tim Warner said. Yeah. I mentioned, you know, maybe selling uh, previews of, of particular episodes before they go to air as an option. There's also yeah. an option maybe to go ad-free on some programs if you That's right. pay a little bit extra. Yeah. Um, are they sort of pie-in-the-sky things, or how far away might we be from you know, oh, I think... pre-selling a, a <laughs> series, you know, premiere or, or a series finale? Uh, I think Tim even put up his roadmap and timetables to mm. say when it will happen. The reality is consumer behaviour is changing, and consumers are more in control so we'll still confidently give them the programming and, and, and push the content to them but if someone's interested in watching without ads we shouldn't be afraid of that mm. if someone's interested in watching next week's episode fantastic so no we're we're very committed to having that happen and that's in real time from what tim showed today we mm. saw your executive chairman here today uh, kerry stokes yes how involved has he been in this process and did would he have learnt much today like everyone else or <laughs> has he been sort of a part of it along the way no well this this has obviously been a strategy that was presented to the board the end of last year so after our strategic planning exercise we did present this strategy to the board what we wanted to do was go away and start implementing and then when we did come out and talk publicly even with our staff there'd be a context but we could actually show that we've got traction and it's actually happening.
that's why what we were showing today isn't pie in the sky. There's a commitment, and we're already well on the way to doing a lot of this. So what's next then? What's next for you? you sort of, you've, you've laid out the big framework. Do you get down into some of the detail? Oh, and The uh, sleeves rolled up and, and we keep making it work. So yeah. You've got target dates and things like that, presumably. Yeah, well, now we're on the hook. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, that, that's right. Rowan, thanks for joining us. Pleasure. Coming up on Media Week, APN gets a new CEO from within News Limited's ranks.